welcome back. I've got a really fun experiment for you today and one that looks at how similarly sized objects roll down slopes. The answer is very counterintuitive and I'm going to show you how this can be explained by looking at a Russian doll. You might remember a while back I did a video on falling objects and we looked at two coke cans, one that was full and one that was empty. And we did an experiment to see whether we could decide which one was full just by dropping them and seeing which one hit the ground first. So let's have a quick look at that experiment. One of these cans is empty, that one's empty, and the other one's full. And let's see which one hits the ground first. Three, two, one, go. So the result of that experiment was somewhat counterintuitive that all things being equal and ignoring air resistance, a full coke can, which is very heavy and feels a much stronger force of gravity, falls at exactly the same rate as an empty can, which is much lighter and feels much weaker forces due to gravity. But what we're gonna to do today is something slightly different. Instead of letting them fall directly, we're gonna roll them down a slope. And I hinted at this in the video I made about the falling coke cans a while back. So let's repeat that experiment that I did a while back with the two cans. One of them's full and one of them's empty. And what we're gonna do is roll them down the slope and see which one hits the end first. Give some thought to what might happen with the heavier one, give some thought to what might happen with the lighter one and which one finds it easier to move. So let's line them up, let go and see what happens. And the rather surprising result is that this time, the light one, the empty one, just gets left behind and the full one, which is heavier, makes it to the end of the slope quickest. So that's rather strange because when we drop them vertically, both cans fall at the same rate and from the same height, both of them hit the ground at the same time. So I wonder what happens if we do it with similarly sized solid but spherical objects. This one's a solid hockey ball, and this one, as you know, is a hollow tennis ball. So we'll put these on the slope and let them roll down and see which one makes it to the bottom first. Three, two, one, go. And yet again, it's the heavier of the two that makes it down to the bottom first. So there's one more experiment we can try. And it's this that's the key to why one of them gets to the bottom first. We'll do it with a regular golf ball and we'll do it with one of these practice golf balls, which basically has nothing in the middle. What's important about this one is all of its mass is in a single spherical shell on the outside of its shape. So let's line these two up. And I think you can guess what's gonna happen now. Three, two, one, go. And much as expected, the heavier one hits the bottom first. Well, I've had sleepless nights trying to think up an explanation for this one that's simple enough to do in a video without pages and pages of maths and knowing some really rather advanced physics. So let's see if we can have a go at explaining why the solid object always reaches the bottom first and the hollow one of the same size takes much longer. The first thing that I'm sure you know is at the top of the ramp, they have gravitational potential energy. And yes, the heavy one has more gravitational potential energy than the hollow one because it's got more mass, but they're both at the same height. And then when they come down the slope, they convert that gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. But why it's different from dropping them is the kinetic energy appears in two forms. It coming down the slope, which is translational or I suppose linear kinetic energy. But don't forget what's also happening is it's rotating. So some of that gravitational potential energy goes into causing the object to rotate as well as to move it in a straight line down the ramp. And this is the key to why the heavier one makes it to the bottom first. Now, both the objects also have momentum. And uh, this is quite a tricky concept, but some of you will know it's mass times velocity. And again, there's two different forms of momenta here. There's linear momentum, which is an easy one and one that most GCSE students do. 
but there's a more complicated form of momentum, and that's the rotational or angular momentum. Now, you might have noticed that when ice skaters spin on the ice, when they bring their hands inwards, they seem to just go faster, though they're not doing anything different with their body or their feet. And as soon as they put their hands outwards, they seem to slow down their rotational velocity. And angular momentum is the key to this. Angular momentum takes into account a number of factors, but one of them that's really important is where the mass is positioned. If the mass is very, very close to the body or the rotating object's centre, it has a lower angular momentum than if the mass is spread out a long way from the centre. So have a think about these two. The hollow one has all its mass on the outside, so it's got a lot of angular momentum on that outer shell, and the solid one has its momenta spread throughout its mass. It's got mass in the middle going all the way to the outside. So here's where the Russian doll comes into the story, kindly given to me by one of my Russian students many years ago. Now, the Russian doll shows very nicely the difference between the two types of ball going down the slope. The one that's solid is solid all the way through, and it behaves like a Russian doll with all of its dolls inside. In other words, some of the mass is in an outside shell, some is in an inner and further inside and right down to the middle with a little baby doll that usually sits in the middle. Whereas the hollow ball has all its mass concentrated only in the outer shell. And if you remember, angular momentum depends upon where you put the mass. And the further out you put the mass, the more the angular momentum will be for that given object. So finally, the hollow ball, with its mass all concentrated in the outside edge, has to use a great deal of its gravitational potential energy to convert into angular momentum. And because the mass is very spread out, in other words, it's right on the outside edge of the object, it needs quite a lot of angular momentum to get it to rotate at any speed. Whereas the solid ball has its mass concentrated more towards the centre therefore uses less of its gravitational potential energy to get it up to speed, to give it angular momentum, and to get it to go down the slope. So, you can't tell which Coke can is empty and which is full by dropping them vertically, but you can by rolling them down a slope. The full one will always get to the bottom first. So, I hope you enjoyed that rather counterintuitive bit of physics, and that my explanation went some way to explaining what's going on. Anyway, I'm going to do more experiments soon, so I look forward to seeing you then.